Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about the keyframes editor in Fusion. So I've done another video on the spline editor, I'm going to link that up above. So I'm going to be talking about the spline editor and how it relates to the keyframes editor because there's a lot of overlap and it's good to see the comparisons between the two, but there are some things that the keyframe editor can do that you can't do in the spline editor, so I'll be sure to point those things out as, as we go along. So to bring up the keyframe editor, we can come up here just like we could with the spline editor, we'll just click on this. You can also use the F7 shortcut to bring up the keyframe editor. And right now, there's nothing that's, that sort of shows up here except for our media out node because we're starting with a blank uh, fusion composition. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the effects library. I'm gonna come up under edit templates. That's where the titles are stored. And I'm gonna come down to lower third simple underline. The reason I'm choosing this one is I've done a tutorial on the past. I'll link that above right now. And I don't wanna spend too much time sort of digging into the details of this. And I want something that's not overly complex, but sort of complex enough that it shows some of the features of the keyframe editor. So right now we're gonna connect this down to media out. We're just gonna drag this over here to give us a little bit of space. Now the first things to notice is there's two main sections of the editor. Over here is what's called the header section and over here is what's called the track section. And everything that shows up here in your node editor has a corresponding track over here and the colors happen to match. So if we look at our line color, this green here, well that's our line color over here. So I won't go, go through all the color groupings, but if you take a look at this group up here in the toolbar here of our shapes, and I'm just gonna drag a bunch of these down, these are all that brown color. Whereas the 3D nodes over here all share this blue color. And you can change those colors. You can either click on the track over here, come up to set color and choose whatever color you want, or you can do that down here as well through the node editor. In any case, we'll leave the defaults. So as far as navigating around this editor, there's a couple controls up at the top. There's a zoom bar here, which you can kind of drag and zoom. There is the fit uh, zoom to fit button here. If you hold down the control or command key, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out, and that'll do zooms as well. You can hold down your middle mouse button and uh, pan back and forth. You can also change the size of some of these controls here. So let's say I wanted to look at this, uh, this control here, this uh, line rect anim, and I wanted to look at the width parameter, which we can see down here is keyframed. And I want to see this a little bit bigger. I can right click on this and I can come up to line size. Right now it's set to small, Let's, I'm gonna change this one to large. And that'll just change that one there. So if I wanna focus on this particular one, that's one way to do it. I can also uh, right click anywhere and I can change all line sizes and make them all whatever size I want. So let's change them all to medium, for example. Okay, that's all well and good, but that's a little bit hard to see. So I'm just gonna go back to this right here. One thing that I wanna note, I'm just gonna play this animation through. So we're up to 120 frames here and we've chosen uh, basically a, the default five second clip when uh, when, when I brought in the, 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 the fusion composition, it, it defaults to five seconds. Um, so that's 120 frames at 24 frames per second. And you'll notice here, this animation that I brought in, it has these keyframes up in 130 and 150. But if I play this animation through, and just a very, I don't want to get into the details of exactly how this, how this all works here, but if we look at this width animation, that's essentially um, controlling when this, let me play this animation here, when this green bar comes in and out of existence and the center keyframe down here is what's moving the actual text up and down and you'll notice these keyframes here never really get hit as we watch the as we watch this playhead it's only going to come up to this 120 frames and it's going to kind of stop but hold on a second when we look at these keyframes they're actually being played right we see the the green bar recede and we see the text drop off too. That's what, that's what these keyframes out here are doing. And the reason that's working is because of this keyframe stretcher here. So it's basically squishing this entire animation into my 120 frames. So if I were just to come up here just temporarily to turn off the keyframe stretcher, you'll notice when I get to the end here, nothing happens. It just restarts the animation. The animation doesn't really finish. These keyframes are never hit without the keyframe stretcher. Without the keyframe stretcher. So we'll turn that on again and off we go. So when we get really complicated node structures, this can get pretty overwhelming, especially the default is sort of to pull one of these tracks in for every single node that you have in your node tree. It's not too bad now, but once things get a little bit more complex, it can get a bit unwieldy. So one thing we can do to control that is we can come up here. You'll notice I have something called text nodes. Now that's, that, that's something I created, but right now let me just click on it. And essentially I've set that up just to show me text plus nodes and 3D text nodes. And I don't have any 3D text nodes, I only have text plus nodes, which in this case happens to be this main text. But if I were to come up to here, let's just grab a 3D text node and I'm just gonna throw it anywhere, it's gonna show up. 
But if I were to come over here and grab this, uh, this, this 3D shapes node, it's going to be filtered out. Now I can create those in a couple these filters in a couple ways. I can come over to this menu and I can come to create edit filters, or I can also come up to the fusion menu under fusion settings. I come down to timeline and there's this section here that talks about all filters. So for example, if I were to this filter drop down, I can see my text nodes show up there. So I'm just going to delete this text nodes and sort of start again. Yep, I want to delete that. Okay, and I save it. Okay, so that sort of goes away here. So if I wanted to create a new one from scratch, I come to the menu here. I'll, I'll do it this way now. I'll create edit filters. Come up to here. I'll create a new filter. I'll call it, I'll do the same thing. We'll call it text nodes. Sure. We'll go OK. And then essentially what it allows you to do is choose what you want to filter on by these drop downs here. And all the items that show up here correspond to what you would see in the node editor if you go to add tool. So we know that our text plus node shows up under generator down here. So knowing that, I'm going to go invert all. We're just going to take all these checkboxes off. Then I'm going to come down to generator, expand that, come down to text plus, and go save. Now if I come over here, I see my text nodes. I click on that, and it just shows the text plus node. So pretty powerful. You can set that up however you want. For now, though, we're just going to go back to show all. Now I should point out that those filters aren't specific to the keyframe editor. Those will work in the spline editor as well. And they're also not specific to this particular project. So if I were to uh, start a new project, those filters will all, will all exist. All right, so we've talked a lot about the keyframe editor, but one thing we haven't mentioned yet are keyframes. So let's focus right now on this line rect anim width uh, keyframe parameter. And I'm gonna make this a little bit larger as we did before. And one of the things, one of the things that I don't personally like are these are these bars here. I guess they're pretty handy because you can kind of see them easily. But if you're used to working in the spline editor, you're used to working on these little nodes that would show up on the spline. You can change to that mode if you want. It's really just a preference. You could right click here, you would come up to options and you would say display point values. Now with this setup, you can do some basic editing. You can grab these control nodes and you can kind of move them around a little bit. It still recognizes if I press F, uh, which is essentially flat, um, and what that does, I'll bring up the spline editor here beside just to show. And remember, when we push flat, essentially what it's going to do, it's going to take these Bezier handles here, and it's going to essentially, when we press the F key for flat, just flatten these out horizontally. We can also push S for smooth. We come over here, we can do that same thing as well. So if we select this here, press S, now it's smooth at this note here. So there's some basic stuff that you can do. I think probably most people would prefer to come over and use the spline editor for a lot of this editing. Um, it seems to be a little bit more intuitive to use. So let's just turn off the spline editor for now. I'm going to go back to f uh, fit full here. Now if you take a look over here, we have all these little lock icons. And the idea is, according to the manual, you're supposed to be able to click on these uh, and they're supposed to lock the track. They don't seem to do anything right now. Um, there is a different lock feature. I don't think it's the same lock feature that this was intended to be. So if you right click on any header here and you come up to modes, there's this lock mode and you can get there with control L shortcut as well, but I'll just click on lock for now. And that doesn't lock the entire track. I can still edit things, but what it does do is it takes all the nodes and it locks them together. So when I pick one to move, all of them move in unison. We can also set up guides and this also applies to the spline editor. And I wanted to bring up the spline editor to talk about guides. So guides are essentially markers for these two windows here and we can come up anywhere along the timeline. We can sort of right click and we can just go add guide. And that essentially just adds this marker here. And I can sort of move this wherever I want. I can double click on it and that'll snap the timeline to it. I can create another one here and go add guide here. And notice over here, you can see that um, I'm gonna go zoom to fit here. Uh, the markers show up as well and the playheads are also tied together. I can also right click on one of these and I can go show guide list. That shows the different guide lists. I can assign names to them, whatever that might be. I can turn them on and off in the spline editor or what's called the timeline here, it's, it's labeled the timeline. That's really talking about our keyframe editor here. So there's also a number of snap options that we can use. So just to, to show that, I'm just gonna pick uh, at some point uh, near one of these guides here. Let's, let's, let's go over to this guide here and I'm gonna control mouse wheel to zoom in. Zoom in on it and now you see, let's get this set up. Um, and you see at the top here, let's take a look at these numbers. Here's uh, 43, frame 43 and then frame 40 over here. So it's broken down into a whole uh, number of subframe increments here. Now let's just say over here, I'm going to push set key. So it's just going to set a key and that's just going to go, if you notice, I'm just kind of dragging this key anywhere 
in between this frame. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want to snap to frame. So that's great if I really want that level of control where I need to do some subframe keyframing. But assuming I just want to snap to frames, for example, I have a number of options to do that. So I can right click, I'll go to options, auto snap points. Right now I have it set up to guides and none. So what none is referring to is none is kind of grouped with this frame and this field here. So it's either none, frame, or field. And I'll show you what those mean in a minute. And notice this guides is checked on. Whatever I do, I can't get it to snap to a guide. It doesn't really do anything. So I don't think that feature is working right now. So we're just going to forget about this guide for a moment, but I'll show you the other options here. Auto snap points, and I'm going to go to frame. So frame, this is going to now snap to uh, a frame. So over here, we're over at 40, and then it jumps right over to 43 here. I can also jump to what's called a field, and a field is simply half a frame. So back to auto snap points over to field, and now I'm going to be able to, so here's the middle of the frame, 43.5. Oops. Grab my node and it jumps over to 43.5, it'll snap there and then it'll as well to the, to the end of the frame. I think by default it snaps to frames, which kind of makes, makes sense in probably most cases. There's also some options here. If I right click and go back to options, I go to auto snap guides. So guides can also snap to frames or fields and this actually feature actually works here. So right now I'm snapping to a frame, whereas before I could kind of move this anywhere in between. So let's zoom back out again. Uh, one really cool feature is this spreadsheet view. So if I click on this here, it brings up this little spreadsheet down here and I'll click on width and that sort of populates things here and it populates things with all the different keyframes here and then their values. And you can see some of the values here are not lined up directly on a frame. That's because I didn't have my snap on. So if I were to look at this value here, 70.06, if I were to sort of play around with this now with my snap on, it would snap to a particular value. So there we snapped to 78. I can change the values in here. I can set it to 0.5 or whatever. I can also change the values up here. I can change this to 80 from 78, for example, to move it over a little bit. I can add a bunch of new keyframes in here. So let's say I got a space between uh, 45 and 80. So let's say I wanted to do a keyframe at 50, 50, 60, and 70, for example. So it's gonna put those all in order and it's gonna set up some values. It's just gonna do some interpolation and set up some values. But now I can go change those values and do whatever I want to them. A couple of other things, I have things expanded completely. So this here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close down the spline editor. I'm gonna open up the node editor once again. And if I look at this line rect anim, for example, that's this node here. And inside it, I have the width parameter that we're doing the keyframing on. And that's with this little arrow here. I can kind of collapse this. And you'll notice things kind of all sort of shrink up and you see the spline within the track here. So I find that a little bit difficult to use. That's why I would prefer to use this and kind of expand on the keyframe track to make it a little easier to manage. If you're gonna go through all that trouble though, maybe just use the spline editor. I think some of the power of, uh, of the keyframe editor comes from, be able, from being able to move these, these clips around. And, and we're gonna look at that in just a second here. All right, so I've changed things around a little bit. I've just started off with, with a very simple second uh, fusion comp. So all I have is this media in, which is this turntable clip up here, and then that, that just goes straight to media out. And I just wanted to show that because of some of the um, capabilities you have in terms of editing clips inside of the keyframe editor. So video MP4, so that's the name of this clip. You'll notice these little arrows that sort of go off the side here. That sort of means I'm somewhere in the middle of this clip and I can slip it back and forth essentially. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this, I'm holding my left mouse button down and I'm just pulling this over to the left. So I'm essentially just slipping the clip back and then you can see eventually we sort of run out of, run out of room at the end there. I can also do some trims. So you'll notice my, my icon here, that's the slip icon when I come up to the end here, I can do uh, trims as well. And you'll notice when I, if I were to slip sort of back, as soon as I get to the end of my fusion composition, you see that little arrow pop up right there. So these little arrows just sort of mean that there's sort of more to come that way. But when I pull things back, that arrow goes away because we've run out of, we've run out of road as far as this clip is concerned. Uh, one cool little feature though, if you wanted to do uh, inside here, uh, freeze frame essentially. So let's say I have this clip here and um, I run through the clip and I want to, from this point on, my clip is over, but I want to hold that last frame down to the end of the fusion composition. So essentially what I can do there, so let's say I wanted to finish on frame 90 and I have 120 frames. So I come up to my inspector. I have this uh, hold first and last frame that I can use. So it's 
the last frame in this case, it works the same for the first frame, but we happen to be looking at the last frame here. And then I want to hold that last frame for, what is it, 30 frames. And so that just essentially fills in this last little bit holding that last frame. So let me just play this animation here and you'll see this turntable stop somewhere around frame 90 and just hold that last frame. Perfect. So that's a really easy way to do um, freeze frames essentially. So that's all I wanted to cover today, everyone. Thanks uh, so much for tuning in. Very much appreciated. Um, so, so that's that's the keyframe editor that we've looked at. We've looked at the spline editor before. So the third uh, piece of the puzzle would really be um, doing a tutorial on the node editor um, to go through all the features there. So if there's any interest in that, uh, let me know in the comments. And that's something I can put on the, on the, the list of uh, to-do videos. Um, until then, take care, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye.